Um, as I'm saying, uh, I think that we should really take a look at some... Oh, hey there. Sorry about that. I was just taking care of a little bit of a misunderstanding. But anyway, welcome to this month's edition of High School Happenings. Now, to kick off this episode, we're going to take a look at the group of students who run High School Happenings and who are also part of a school-wide broadcasting system called Cougar Vision here at Colonel Bias Secondary School. Now, while you guys take a look, I'm going to finish up this little misunderstanding, all right? Have fun. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, I really think that the future of you Good morning, Colonel Bai. Good morning, Colonel Bai. Hello, CB. Good morning, Colonel Bai. 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 Here, are you morning events? So Cougar Vision has become a real uh, huge part of the identity of Colonel Bai and what makes it unique. I know that the, the staff and students and, and school community as a whole take great pride in that. Um, we have our own all-digital in-school television station that broadcasts all the fantastic things that students are doing, promotes upcoming events. Um, the Cougar Vision class also produces special features and segments for the, they've been hired by the school board, various industry people um, at special events. and they, our year-end assembly, they help with the yearbook, uh, going with a virtual yearbook that includes a lot of Cougar Vision content. And it's actually, I, I was here prior to Cougar Vision and it's done an incredible job of just um, a sense of community within the school, providing a student voice, but also just raises spirit and awareness of uh, all the great things that are happening in the school. So Monday Show is the first show of the week for Cougar Vision. It sets the tone for the week, starting off with like telling people what clubs are meeting, what events are happening throughout the week. Uh, Monday Show has a bunch of neat content such as Cougar of the Week, which we choose a student in the school every week and we just show the school off, like show the school uh, who this person is. Uh, we've done a variety of different commercials for different set of things such as Spirit Week, we made a music video, uh, we made a bunch of serious ads and just a bunch of event coverage, which is pretty fun. Well, uh, we're a Tuesday show, Sports Desk, uh, so yeah. uh, Randy and I, um, or Francis as we call him. Yeah, we, uh, we play the specific, the hosts of the show, so we're the ones who are introducing the different sports segments and all those, and then the other members of our group, and sometimes us, we all head out to the sports and we film them, and in general, it's more of a kind of highlights reel because we don't really talk about the sports which are coming up but we do try to get people interested in sports and see what's happening get people on the air give them a kind of what title, would you say title i'd say yeah we give the the athletes themselves a very uh <clears throat> we make them more known so the wednesday show is an ecliptic show where we make three ads uh for each wednesday uh, the three ads usually consist of either one or two skits and one or two street pieces where we go around and interview people. So on Thursday's show we are an eclectic show and we make um, ads on different clubs, sports, and we also advertise um, different events in the school. So the Friday show um, is the weekly comedy show that we put on so we get to do skits. Um, it's, it's, really fun. it's really great to be honored just because we can do pretty much whatever we want, I mean, within reason. We always have to go to our teachers and see, is this allowed, is this allowed on air, you know what I mean? But um, we can pretty much write anything, and as long as it <clears throat> have, follows the guidelines, we can put it on air. So for that reason, I'm really grateful to be on the Friday show, just because we have a lot of freedom to do what we want. Um, so Cougar Vision airs um, every day at second period, and all the classrooms have a TV, so everyone watches it on those. And the announcements are aired, different ads about different events, sports, and also, um, every Friday we have like a comedy show, so it's a good, it's a cool mix of different um, things. I see a lot of confidence being developed in our students and their ability to lead a project, to take on different tasks in a group, to build their skills and proficiency in an area where they might not have had skills before. And I also see them building their networking skills. So they're networking with students in terms of making sure they get uh, video clips of certain components. Uh, there's always a lot of laughter in the production room and in the halls when the students are walking around doing their streeter interviews. And I think that it really engages our students in an opportunity that don't uh, 
often present themselves in, in all schools. We put on a show for Rogers TV called High School Happenings, and I'm one of the hosts for that. So that's pretty cool, too. Uh, that get, gets broadcast to uh, the entirety of Ottawa, as long as you have Rogers cable. So that's pretty cool. We've got actually a pretty long list of uh, very successful alumni from Cougar Vision who have gone on to, uh, to, to pretty big things in the field. We have uh, a person who works for George Lucas and George Lucas Studios. Um, we have several people who are working right in the, in the uh, media industry. Um, we have a student that works for Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, another one that works for the Raptors producing their TV show. Um, we have several students with, uh, one with Sportsnet, one with uh, Headline Sports. Uh, we have a student who's a documentary filmmaker for National Geographic. So we've got a, a real wide range of people who've gone on to be very successful in the field. What, what Kui Vision is, it's difficult to define it as one thing. It's announcements, it's a TV show, and it's also, if we're looking at the people behind it, it's kind of a way of life, almost. Like, it takes a lot of effort to make these things and show them to the public. And a lot of people see the show, the announcements, but they don't see what else goes on behind it. It's a family. I'd see how much of a family and how close each person and each group is. So I guess like before I didn't really realize how close they were, but like now having the experience and like being in on the action, I've realized how close we've all become, not just friends, but we're just a big family. This really isn't my thing. You know who could help me with this project? The students over at Rideau High School in the construction program. Amber, take it away with the experts. All right guys, so we're here at Rideau High School taking a look at their construction schism program. And I heard that they're doing a very big project, so let's go check it out and see what's going on. All right guys, so I'm here with... Uh, Brandon. All right, Brandon, can you tell me just a little bit about the Chisholm program here at Rideau High School? Uh, yeah, um, Chisholm program, it's, uh, it's really fun. It's not that hard to get into. You just have to really, like, dedicate yourself and stuff like that. Basically, we learned, we're working on this house right here, and we're wiring it up, and, like, we have to do our own plans, and it's really fun. Like, you learn drywalling and a lot of stuff that's, like, really valuable for yourself because, like, like you, instead of you can pay people to do the stuff, or you can kind of learn, like, a little bit of stuff here so you don't have to, like, spend as much money, and, yeah. All right, so I'm here with... Dominic and Sang. Awesome. So guys, can you just tell me a little bit about your experience here at the Schism program at Rideau High School? We learned how to like make sure how the wires are put inside the boxes correctly so none, no one gets uh, uh, electrocuted or cause a fire with the electrical wires. Um, yeah, we learned uh, mu uh, so much stuff in this school so that we can use uh, at home where we can uh, wire up our stuff or do it ourselves. So yeah, it's a really good experience. And do you hope to go into a field that uh, this is required in uh, post-secondary? Um, I haven't think about it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I don't, if things don't work out, hopefully this might help. <laughs> All right. Mr. Hicks, Greg Hicks. Mr. Hicks, and can you just tell me a little bit about the program here at Rideau High School? Uh, we have a construction uh, schism program, so we uh, focus on electrical and plumbing in the schism program. Uh, students are able to uh, do a lot of different works with electrical and plumbing. Right now, our electricity class is working. Uh, next semester, we have a plumbing class and an electricity class. And uh, they get to learn a lot of skills uh, that an uh, electrician would use and a plumber would use. Uh, so they're learning skills that they might use for their own sell for, for a career in, a, in, the, in the trades or even university. Some are bound for university. And can you tell me just a little bit about the project that you're working on here? I can tell that you guys are making a house. Yeah, the, uh, the group is uh, divided up. We've got groups in there and they each have a room to do and so they're wiring up a room just like they would if they were wiring up a, a real house. Uh, they actually build the, the structure that you see there as well. So another group has built the structure and uh, next semester we have a group coming in and they'll be doing, they'll be putting in bathrooms in this structure as well. So they, they have four bathrooms in this one small structure when it's all done. Uh, I want to go to like a Gonquin and like do an apprenticeship, become like an electrician and then just, yeah, just make money doing that. And would you say that this program uh, prepares you and fully qualifies you to be uh, an electrician? Uh, yeah, well not really, like, it gives you kind of like a little like taste of what it is. It's not like 100%, like I wouldn't really say that, but yeah, I guess it kind of prepares you for what's going to come next and stuff like that. 
All right, guys, well, that's it from us here at Rito High School doing a segment on the Schism program here. I just got to get back to do some electrical work. So back to you, Ken, and uh, I'll see you soon. Man, they really do make it look easy. All right, stay tuned after the break to see if Zach really does have a green thumb. You know, I'm really not much of a gardener, but we got the chance to meet some students and teachers over at Rio High School who seem to have some real green thumbs. Take it away, Kat. All right, so I'm here with Melissa Letcherwood. And Melissa, can you give us a little bit of a background on how this project started? Well, I have a science class down the hallway here, and uh, I often would see this structure sticking out of the building, and a lot of my students would ask, why, do we have a greenhouse? And I said, yes, we do. And they said, why don't we use it? And I said, I don't know why we don't use it. So I decided to take it upon myself, um, took a year off of work, and came in and uh, planted a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables in the building. Um, it worked somewhat. My goal was to make organic fruit and vegetables for our own food pantry for our uh, school. Um, and so we're still kind of in that process of trying to get that to happen. Perfect. And um, how long has this been running? About three years. Yeah. And uh, it's a, a couple of volunteer teachers that come in on their own time at lunch before school and after school. Uh, Miss Monica has really taken a lead this year and um, done some amazing things and tried to change it up. We weren't having much success planting plants in um, pots. So we tried the indoor garden method this year and we're trying to see if that's going to make a difference in getting more fruits and vegetables produced. And uh, what are your hopes for the project in the upcoming years? Well, I'm hoping my dream would have this whole room filled with lots of fruits and vegetables that students can come in and uh, learn about them, do experiments with them, and harvest them, and we can eat them and make you know lots of good food. All right, so I'm here with Esther, Joseph. And what have you guys been up to in the greenhouse? Uh, we'll be measuring the wood for the indoor garden. So I'm here with Miss Monica. And um, can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, so um, the idea was just to do a bunch of experiments in here, um, which is pretty much what we've been doing since September. So we've germinated a whole bunch of things. Um, we've had things die because of weather issues and tried out different types of soil mixes that we, um, just to see which works better. We, we learned that watering the plants from below actually helped them to grow better. And also we were having a really hard time keeping the soil um, wet just because it would dry out um, quite fast. So then we had some classes pulled together and build these um, tables. And actually they seem to be holding water a little too well. So we're trying to figure that out now. Um, yeah, there, this place was full of plants at one point and now we're just kind of trying to, to germinate more and learn from um, the mistakes that we've made. Perfect, thank you. Now this episode has been pretty fun guys, but it's time to take a look at a more serious issue that affects each and every one of us. Mothers Against Drunk Driving recently had a seminar at Colonel by Secondary School. Now let's go take a look. Impaired driving in Canada is actually two separate offenses. One offense is that your blood alcohol level exceeds the legal limit of 80 milligrams per cent. And the second offense is that you are physically impaired in your ability to operate a motor vehicle by alcohol or something else, be it drugs or lack of sleep or anything. My name is Robert Bell. I'm a retired military police colonel. I spent 26 years in the military as a police officer. Yeah, I've been involved in several uh, bad drunk driving incidents, um, motorcycle accidents where the driver was impaired and crashed, um, car accidents where one of the drivers was killed. One of them I remember is a young guy that was driving a motorcycle with no helmet on and he was impaired and he crashed the motorcycle and hit a railway, railway uh, tie and it hit him in the side of the face and peeled his entire face off from one side to the other. I've definitely known people who have done it. Um, it's never a good thing, it's always scary. It never leads to anything good, just stresses everybody out all the time. 
when usually what happens is you will observe a drunk driver either at a check stop or by um, their driving habits being irregular and you'll stop them and perform some roadside sobriety screening tests then if you have enough information to believe that they've been impaired by alcohol or drugs then you detain them and take them back to the police station and you test them on an approved instrument that has been um, calibrated to give very accurate blood alcohol readings and determine what their actual blood alcohol is. If their blood alcohol exceeds 80 milligrams percent, then you can charge them with impaired driving. Now guys, we can't stress enough how important Mad's message is. Please guys, don't drink and drive. Now when we come back from the break, we're going to get your appetites going, so stay tuned. Same old stuff. You know, it's lunches like these that make me really wish I went to Sir Guy Carlton. Let's go find out why. Take it away, Beata. Today, we're at Sir Guy Carlton High School, and we're checking out their culinary schism program. And by my outfit, you guessed it. We're going inside the kitchen. Let's go. is uh, Nicola Jarvis. Okay, and your position? I am the teacher and head of uh, soft tech in the schism at the Sir Guy Carlton. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit about what the schism program is? We call it advanced culinary education, and it's just that, as you can see, we have a very advanced kitchen facility here, and um, our goal is to have students ready to go either to college or to the workplace or to an apprenticeship program in cooking. So many of our graduates have, in fact, accomplished that. That's great. How long have you been doing this? The Schism's been running for five years, roughly. Do you think the students are enjoying it? Do you think it helps them go on further in their lives? Yeah, the students have a lot of fun. It's, it's much more hands-on than, than many courses, so we're in the kitchen and doing things most of the time, which makes it much more engaging. Um, the statistically, we've seen a very good success rate in terms of graduation. If you look at Schism statistics at the um, the, the college and workplace pathway level, we're getting a much higher retention level. <laughs> and what are you cooking today? We are doing a luncheon for a group of senior citizens that come here once a month. So I'm here with... Chef Mike. And Chef Mike, can you please tell me what your position is? I have a very unique position here. I uh, run the kitchen by purchasing the foods for the for this uh, program as well as for the cafeteria. I love it. They, they, these guys are uh, they're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, entwined. Uh, they really want to uh, learn and I actually have uh, probably a good 10 students that work for me at lunch that I'm giving them skills that they can use outside in the real world and I've gotten probably about a good four or five uh, students here jobs in the industry. That's really amazing. I'm Cameron Taylor. Uh, and what grade you're in? I'm in grade 12, cooking. All right, great. Tell me, how are you enjoying this cooking program that you're I in? Am, I'm definitely enjoying it. I've learned a lot since I was here. Uh, we Earlier we learned how to do uh, turkeys for the Thanksgiving dinners and stuff. Uh, we learned cutting techniques, rolling, essentially like pretty much everything. And your name is? Zachary Smith. And what grade are you in? I'm in grade 12. Okay, and so how long have you been in this program? So I've been in this program for about four years, and I've been training hard to try to be a chef. And uh, I've been working in lots of different restaurants for about since I was like 14, 15. And I don't know, it's my goal. That's really cool. So you joined this program because you wanted to become a chef? Yes, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. Uh, and has the, do you think this program has helped you, has trained you? This uh, program has a lot of benefits to it, and you learn not just how to cook, but prioritization. There's so much different factors that you'll learn from the program. So I'm here with? Megan. And you're in what grade? 12. Okay. And can you tell me what you're doing here? I am just kneading the dough for the Jamaican patties. And can you tell me how you're enjoying the program right now? I am really enjoying the program because I love to cook and it's really fun. Uh, and are you planning on going into culinary like later on in life? Yes, I am. And what are your, do you want to be the main head chef or what are you thinking? I want to be the sous chef. So. So I'm here with one of the people who is about to enjoy the delicious food the kids are serving. So can you tell me your name? Uh, Kay Johnson and my husband Vic is here too. <laughs> and how long have you guys been coming to these kind of events? Five or six years about. Maybe a bit more, yes. Um, and do you, are you looking forward to the food that the kids are going to be cooking for you? Uh, we always look forward to it. It's delicious. The children do very, very well. The servers are learning week by week how it's supposed to be done and so on, so that's an added bonus. <laughs> Hey, yeah, could you come pick me up? My car broke down. Alright, thanks. I sure wish I knew as much about cars as the students at Sir Guy Carlton do. Let's go check out their program. Zach, take it away. Hi there. We're at Sir Guy Carlton High School checking out their really unique and interesting automotive schism. Let's go take a look. Hey there, I'm here with... Gregory Foster. So, Gregory, could you tell me a little bit about the program you're in here? Well, in this program, we're learning about auto body and auto service. For the everyday thing, we usually do just like service on cars because we do have people from the public that come out and we would service their car. We'll do like uh, change uh, brakes, oil, or we would just like top up on a bunch of oils or something like that. And Or also on this side, uh, auto body side, we will um, fix dents or hoods or we can paint our own cars if we want. Alright, I'm here with? Sharda Oje. So Sharda, what grade are you in? Grade 12. I'm the only girl in the program, which is pretty cool, and I get to observe and do different things, like painting and working on the kit car, which is pretty cool. I mean, the guys are always nice, you know, joking around and stuff, so it's exciting. So, Matt, can you tell me a little bit about the car that you guys are building here? Yes, yeah, so what we're building is a uh, 67 uh, Shelby Cobra replica or kit car uh, that we're building brand new from the ground up. Uh, well, this is a project I do with uh, something called Win This Car, where we uh, ride, take a car, we restore it or build it with uh, either homeless youth, uh, school youth, uh, uh, anybody who's looking to, to get some experience in uh, building a classic type of hot rod type car. So yeah, so we decided to come here because uh, Mr. Zarzoza had some space and some, uh, some time and some kids who were interested and here we are. So, uh, so what's your favorite thing to do here at the shop? Uh, probably painting. So how did you get involved in uh, this program? Uh, well, 17 years ago or so I was working at Canadian Tire uh, over on Hug Club in Maryvale. Uh, we were running uh, car shows, classic car shows during the summer. And as a way of uh, raising funds, I decided we'd start giving away cars or giving away prizes. Um, and after the, after the first couple years of giving away cars that we just bought and, and raffled off, I decided to go one step further and, and build cars. So we hooked up with a, uh, a group of uh, homeless youth and uh, taught them some, uh, some automotive skills and some work skills and uh, built our first Cobra. And uh, here we are what, 17 years later, 15 years later, and uh, we're building another one with the guys at Sir Guy Carl. Hey 
Kat. Thanks for picking me up since my car broke down. No problem. Thanks for watching this episode of High School Happenings. Make sure to tune in next time. See you later.